It's your boy PC Scott back with you at Tag Time to share another opportunity that God has given us to go over His Word. God has some great things that He wants to share with us. So I appreciate you taking this time so you can get God's words, so you can learn, so that you can grow. It takes commitment to be a Christian, it takes commitment to be a believer because we have to commit to God's Word and shape our lives based on what He says. So this is part of us doing that. I thank you for being here. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of what we talked about last week, but it's going to be kind of very different. So last month was March and we were celebrating St. Patrick and the stuff that his life meant and some things that he did. We talked specifically about sharing the gospel. If you didn't see the video from last week, please, please, please go watch it. it gives us some information about how we can share the gospel with the people that are around us. I did forget to mention last week. Uh, that some of the information I got, the acronym about gospel, that was created by a guy named Greg Steer. S-T-I-E-R is how you spell his name. He has a ministry called Dare to Share. And he has a whole bunch of good stuff, good information, and we can learn about uh, how to share the gospel. And so that stuff came from him. So I wanted to give credit, but also let you know, go watch the video that we did. And you can also go to that website to find out more information on how you can be more effective in sharing your faith with other people. So we talked about that as a part of our March Remembrance Celebration, whatever, of St. Patty. This week, we're out of St. Patrick's Day. We're moving toward Resurrection Day. But I want to talk about something that's a little bit akin to or a little bit like sharing your faith. It is part of sharing your faith. And so it's, uh, it's part of the series, but it's not totally part of the series, but it's sort of part of the series. So this week we're going to talk about, before we get to that, actually, don't forget if you're watching this on YouTube in particular, like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you think about what we're talking about and share it. You can share it through YouTube. You can also share it on Facebook. So whatever you're doing, please help us continue to get the message out and help the channel grow. It also helped the videos populate up a little bit higher when people are searching for things. So it would tremendously help. Like, subscribe, leave a comment though. Let me know what's going on with you. Can't wait to see you all live and in person. Uh, we do have church on Sundays at 1030 over at Burks Elementary. We don't have our youth services the way we used to right now. Hopefully we'll be get, getting back to that real soon. But you can be a part of regular service. Come on out. I would love to see your face. We can do an air high five or real high five if, you know, you're cool with that. Not scared of that. Let's get into what we're talking about today. It's called missions. Missions is what we're talking about. So in the context of church, if you know anything about church, you've been in church for a while. What comes to your mind when I say missions? We're going to talk about missions today. So some of us might have different ideas and different things like that. But we're going to look at what the word of God tells us. It's kind of like sharing your faith. But missions in particular is really setting out to share your faith. Uh, for Bible words and around, you know, in Bible circles, you have the word evangelism. Evangelism means you just go out and you share your faith or you stay in and share your faith. It is the sharing of faith. All right. When we evangelize now, that's particularly when we're talking about the Bible or God. But, you know, we evangelize all the time. Every time we tell someone about a product we like, about a food that we ate that we liked, about something that we did that we liked, we're evangelizing. We're telling other people about something good that we want them to know. So the word evangelizing is particularly talking about sharing the gospel of Jesus, but the thing of evangelizing, what evangel excuse me, what evangelism is, is something that we constantly do all the time. So don't be afraid. Don't hear missions or evangelism and say, oh, that's not me, I can't do that. Anyway, evangelism is a Christian word. It's talking about sharing the gospel. Missions is also talking about going to share the gospel. Missions is uh, usually reserved for um, people or things that kind of leave their normal area to go do something else. So people might go on a missions trip. I really want to go on a missions trip. We're going to try and really get it done here through tag youth ministry there are lots of things that we can do and lots of things that we can join but in missions we go out or a missions trip you might go on a trip it could be in your city it could be another city in the united states it could be overseas or just somewhere in a different country and a lot of times missions is coupled with something else 
So missions is sharing the gospel like evangelism, but it's coupled with something else like doing some type of work, some type of work where buildings are repaired, things are pa painted, things are planted, uh, people do skits and shows, all these different types of things are coddled into this title of missions. So the heart of missions is to share the gospel, evangelize, but it means something a little bit different because sometimes it means you get out of your comfort zone to go do it. It also means that we're not only sharing the gospel. I can evangelize with one of my friends when we go out to eat or we hang out and we're watching TV. We can talk about Jesus then. That's evangelism. But to do missions, I can't do that from my couch. I can't do that from my home. I can't do that from a restaurant or the places that I normally frequent. So missions is something that we as believers should be involved in. It is an extra step. It's like a step above evangelism. It's something that we go out of our way to do to share Jesus Christ with other people. So we're going to talk about how to do that close at home. And we can talk about how to do that far and abroad. But missions is something that should be a part of the life of every believer. You can give toward missions. You can be active in missions. You should do both. We want to be involved in missions. We're going to find out what that is and why now. There are some things that we can do actually to increase our witness of Jesus Christ. So when we are missionaries or to do missions type work, we're trying to witness for Jesus. Sometimes people go downtown or sometimes people go to a concert or a fair or some type of thing that's going on where there's going to be a bunch of people and they'll go there specifically and they'll just walk around and try and talk to people about Jesus Christ to take the opportunity of all those people there. But there are some very local, kind of small, they're not small, but they don't take a whole lot. So I'm going to call them small. They're big deals. They're important things to do. But, you know, you don't have to get a couple thousand couple thousand dollars together and get on an eight or 10 hour flight to go somewhere to do missions. You can do them locally. Some things that we can do to do missions would be like to clean up inside your church or outside your church. And we don't have our own church building, so it'd be difficult for us to do, but we could be a blessing to the building that we're at. We could be a blessing to other church facilities by cleaning up the yard area. We could do some painting, uh, different things like that, especially now that we're getting into spring. We could do some spring cleaning. We could identify some elderly people in our neighborhood or some single parents in our neighborhood, some people that need some help, and we can help them with their lawn and their landscape. You don't have to be a pro to use a lawnmower. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do. You don't have to be an absolute pro to wave a paintbrush. There is a difference in pro painters and non-pro painters, but amateur painting looks a whole lot better than some of the walls that are, you know, in our houses or people, people's houses. So here are some mission ideas. I want to, I want you to leave in the comments some things that you can think of that we can do to be a witness to other people, to do our own kind of missionary work. These are some ideas that I want to give you. So don't put these ideas in the comments, right? That's like the teacher saying you can't give their example when you, when you do that, when you do the work they assign you to do. So we could do painting, cleaning up uh, someone's place or the church. Uh, you could send notes to elderly people that are in the hospital or they're in an elder care facility where they're not with their parents and family, especially right now during this COVID freak out. There are a lot of people that are disconnected and some people are out of sight, out of mind. Sometimes we can't have physical contact, but we can write notes. We can make videos. Maybe we can go stand outside of an elder care facility and do some stuff on the lawn if they're able to watch from the inside, different things like that. Some ideas. I like an idea that we hear from Caleb every year during the month of February. They call it Love That Sticks. And it's putting an encouraging message on a sticky note, a post-it note, and leaving them wherever. Leave them at the gas station, leave them in the locker room, leave them at school, wherever you can. So that when somebody walks by, they seize that note of encouragement and they can be encouraged. So lots of different things that we can do to be a witness. But first and foremost, primary, our lives should be a witness of who God is. The way we live our lives, just like we were talking about a couple weeks ago, dealing with St. Patrick. Our life should be a witness of who God is and what he wants to do in us. 
So I want to look over in, let's say, Acts chapter 1. Let's go over to Acts chapter 1. You can turn there. You can swipe there. You can flip there. Whatever you got to do. We're going to read a couple scriptures there. <clears throat> Let me find it. Uh, we're going to start right at the top in verse number one. All right, so if you're there, please read along with me. Acts chapter one, it says, The former treaty have I made, O Theophilus, of that of all that Jesus began to do, do, both do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commands, uh, commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, and seen, being seen, seen of him 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. I want you to read verses 1 through 11. For time's sake, I want to drop down to verse number 8. I want you to read 1 through 11. That's your homework. That's your assignment. Be responsible. Read verses 1 through 11. I want to focus on verse number 8 for time's sake. Because I know you're not going to watch this video if it's 20 or 30 minutes long. Come on now. All right. So in Acts chapter 1, look at verse number 8. It says, But ye shall receive power. Now this is Jesus speaking. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. And then uh, he goes on to say the other stuff. I want to focus on that. Jesus told us. He told the disciples. He had it written in the word of God so that it would be for us. We're supposed to be witnesses of him. Again, last week we talked about the video of how to do that, how to share. This is some missionary things where we're taking, sharing the gospel and adding some work to it, some different things to it. But listen, that's what we're supposed to do. He says that we're supposed to be uh, witnesses in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city we live in. All right. So if you live in Katy, if you live in Houston, if you live in wherever in this Houston area or wherever you are watching this video, Jerusalem is your hometown. And the Bible says, Jesus says, we're supposed to share the gospel there. All right. So we're supposed to be missionaries in our own backyard as well as the other places. Then he says, Judea, that's like our country. If we compare what <clears throat> what what they were uh, looking at and how, and how they were living then. So we're supposed to be um, missionaries spreading the gospel, witnesses where we live, not only where we live, our country. Man, social media makes that easier than ever to be a witness to other people. Because not, not only uh, can we witness where we are, we can broadcast it all over the place instantly. And you could be worldwide with one follower or whatever. And so it's easier now than it's ever been to be a witness and fulfill the scripture that God gave us. So we're supposed to be a witness in Jerusalem, we're supposed to be a witness in Judea, that's our home city, as well as our country. Samaria, Samaria was a particularly important place because there was uh, a racism issue between the Samaritans and the Jews. The Jews didn't like the Samaritans, the Samaritans didn't like the Jews. They didn't want to cross paths. If, if Judea was here, Samaria is here, and let's say wherever is here, if you wanted to get from this place to this place, even though the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, they would go around Samaria just to not go through and talk to those filthy people. The Samarians would go around Judea because they just didn't want to have to go deal with those nasty Jews. They didn't like each other. And so he's telling us we're supposed to go to places that maybe we don't feel comfortable. Maybe we don't like those people or how they live or whatever the case might be. But we're supposed to share the gospel with those that we consider unlikable. The other people, those people, those people we're supposed to share the gospel with. And then he sums it up and says the uttermost part of the earth. We're supposed to share the gospel. We're supposed to be a witness to people close to us as well as far, far away. So we want to get this mission mindset going. Again, don't forget, leave me some comments. What are some things that we can do? Some actual things that you and I can do. We can get together and do it as a group. And especially as we get ready to get back together when we are uh, able to meet again, I definitely, definitely want to act on some of these things. 
What can we do to be a witness for Jesus? How can we make his name even more famous? How can we show the love of Jesus Christ? And that's really one of the main things that is added to missions that makes it a little bit different from evangelism. Evangelism is sharing the gospel. Missions is showing the love and sharing the gospel. So if you have some great ideas, I would love to see it. Put that in the comments. I'll see you next week. I hope you're having a great April. We're going to have a great April. Can't wait to share and celebrate Resurrection Day. For now, my friends, that's it for me, for what I have to say. I've given you the word that God gave me on missions. So with that tag, you're it.